Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. So this is a new series that I'm starting. It's going to be a few videos uh, where I share my thoughts on topics that I find interesting and uh, that I've been reflecting on recently. So as an author, I'm always researching and thinking and trying to find solutions uh, to the problems of the ummah. And one of the topics, and it's the topic for today's discussion that I've been writing about recently, is parenting. Right? There's been a lot of uh, requests for many people that I put something together on parenting. Uh, and so I've actually spent a lot of time thinking about this. And the one question I've been thinking about the most is how do we reframe parenting in a positive light? What I mean by this is that very often, when you have a book or a webinar or a lecture on parenting, uh, you often hear the, the speaker starting with, uh, there's no guarantees in parenting. Right? You always hear them starting with this line that, listen, what I'm going to teach you, you know, it, it's the Islamic way, but there's no guarantees. Your child could still go astray. It could still become a test for you. They could still, you know, leave Islam. And this has been bothering me for a while. This approach has been bothering me for a while because... While it is technically true, technically it is true that if you do everything right, your child could still go astray. I think it's a very poor way to frame any conversation or any topic. Uh, because if you start a topic in this way, you are starting with a negative foundation. I want to give some examples on this, right? So if you're teaching a seminar on marriage, how many people start a seminar on marriage by saying, listen, everything I teach you now is good and beneficial, but you're still not guaranteed that your marriage is going to work out and you could still end up divorced. Nobody starts like that. Uh, when it comes to business, nobody says that, listen, whatever I'm teaching you now is good principles of business, but you could still fail. You could still end up bankrupt. Now, technically, this is all true. Technically, you could do everything to make a marriage work. It could still end in a divorce. You could do everything to make a business work. It could still end in bankruptcy. You could do everything to raise your children well, and they could still end up going astray. But notice, when we teach these other subjects, we don't frame it like this. When we teach business, we don't frame it negatively. When we teach marriage, we don't frame it negatively. But for some reason, when we teach parenting, we do. And the reason why these other subjects are not framed negatively is because people are not going to give it their all. You see, if you tell someone that I'm teaching you some business principles and if you apply these principles, you're not guaranteed success, it's highly unlikely they're actually going to make an effort to apply those principles. It's the same with marriage. If you tell someone, listen, these are my principles for marriage, but you still might end up divorced, they're not going to give it their all. Rather, our approach for many subjects in life is these are the principles Go ahead, do your best, do your absolute best. And then, and then, if things still go wrong, we deal with it when it goes wrong. So when you are preparing someone for marriage, you teach them everything about making a marriage work. And along the way, you help them to give it their all. But if they reach a point in their life where they're going through a divorce, you deal with it then. You don't deal with it before they get married. You don't tell them before you get married, listen, one day you may end up divorced and... No, you don't go in that direction. You deal with it when it happens. Now, I've been mean, thinking, why can't we take the same approach with parenting? Why, instead of starting our parenting seminars with there's no guarantees, you can still fail, you know, it might not work, why not go all in on the positivity, all in on making your best effort, and if, if it fails, then we deal with it when that happens. Uh, and the reason for this is that I... You see, the reason why this bothers me is that when it comes to Islam, for any topic in Islam, we have a positive framework, right? Our, our Islamic worldview begins from a position of husnuzan billah, having optimism in Allah, having good thoughts about Allah. That if Allah has put me in this situation, it's best for me. If Allah has given me this gift, it's best for me. If Allah has given me this trial, it's best for me. And... That optimism, we see it in every aspect of our lives, but not often in parenting. That we see parents, you know, they, they don't 
start parenting with this husnuzan billah. They start parenting with, you know, I'm I'm going to try, but you know, my kids might still end up going astray. Where's the good thoughts about Allah? Where's this positive framework? Where's this optimism that I'm going to do my best and inshallah I'm going to get the best results? I mean, again, we don't approach any other subject this way. None of us start a business and say, you know, I'm going to start a business and it might not work out. Nobody starts, you know, we go all in and we have this positive framework and we have this, you know, I'm not going to give up attitude. And we need to have that with parenting as well. Now, this negative attitude to parenting, where does it come from? It actually comes from what I believe is a misplacement of Quranic stories. Now, this, this is what I call it, a misplacement of Quranic stories. What I mean by this is that we look at some Quranic stories and ignore all the others. So, for example, you'll find very often uh, in these lectures, we'd say things like Prophet Nuh a.s. was the best of parents and the best of prophets, but his son still went astray. Therefore, there's no guarantees in parenting. And that becomes our entire framework, and that becomes the position uh, from which uh, you know everything else is derived. And, and this, this is problematic for many reasons. Number one, the Quran is full of stories of positive parenting ending well, uh, with this being the one exception. Right, so we're looking at the exception and ignoring everything else. Uh, number two, the seerah and the lives of the pious is the same. They're full of positive examples of when parents did their best effort, they produced amazing results. Uh, and very rarely do you see an exception. So what's happening is we are focusing on the exception and ignoring the norm. And that exception becomes the norm in our minds. So when you look at parenting in the Quran, I want you to look at it in a broader framework. Right, look at it in terms of holistically, what does the Quran say about parenting? And, and what stories does the Quran give us about parenting? So in the Quran, uh, we have the story of Prophet Ibrahim a.s. And he raises his sons Ismail and Ishaq a.s. to be two of the greatest anbiya. And Ishaq a.s. raises his son Yaqub to be amongst the greatest of the anbiya. And Yaqub a.s. also raises his sons well. Right, And we have four generations of, of righteous parenting here. Now, again, this is a story many people... Uh, bring into this in the wrong way. Uh, many people look at the story of Yaqub and say, oh look, Yaqub raised his sons well, but they still went astray. This is not the full story. This, this, is, this is wrong. It's actually wrong to, to, to position it this way because this is not the full story. Rather, the full story is Yaqub raised his sons well. His sons made a mistake when they were young. He continued to raise them well. He continued to, to guide them through their mistake. He continued to teach them to, to seek Allah's forgiveness. And eventually, eventually those sons became righteous. That's the full story. We're only looking at the first half and, and forming a negative framework based on the first half of the story. And we completely ignore the second half, which shows us that even after your child slips up, even after they commit a major sin, if you have sovereign jamil, if you have beautiful patience, if you remain a role model for them, if you teach them about istighfar, if you remain a part of their lives, if you keep guiding them in the right direction, inshallah, inshallah they can find their way back to Allah. You see, the story is very positive. We frame it negatively. And there are many other stories of positive parenting in the Quran. We have uh, the parents of Maryam alayhi salam raising her to be a righteous woman. We have Maryam Islam herself raising Isa Islam to be a righteous man. We have Dawood Islam uh, raising Suleiman Islam to be a righteous man. We have Luqman Islam raising his children in a, in, in a righteous way and offering them good parenting. You see, all of the parenting stories in the Quran are positive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only mentions one story where the father was righteous and the son went astray. And the reason and the wisdom behind mentioning a story like that is to show us the exception, not the norm. In our minds, we've made the exception the norm. But Allah is showing us the exception. Allah is providing you a role model for those parents whom he tests with this situation. You see, 90% of the time, if you raise your children in a way that is extraordinary, a way that is amazing, a way that is righteous, a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 90% of the time, they will grow into amazing people. But, but some people are tested, some people, not everyone, some people are tested where they did raise their children well. And because of the environment, because of the culture, because of uh, you know, the other parent, because of whatever it is, 
that child may go astray. And that child may become a test for that person. In those situations, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam becomes the role model. But we don't take that situation and make it the norm. We don't take that situation and make it as if it is guaranteed. This is the problem that we think that, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. You know, my parents, my children could still end up like Nuh alayhi salam. Son, we, we take a very negative framing from the story. Rather, we should treat the story like the exception. And we should only bring it up when it's necessary. Right? Meaning, when someone is young and excited and they've got their baby and they come to you for parenting advice, don't start with the story of Nuh alayhi salam. Don't start from that point, right? Start with the story of, 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 of Maryam alayhi salam, you know, or, or rather her, mo her mother making dua for her. Start with, 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 the, with the story of, of uh, Zakaria alayhi salam's dua for, for his son. Start with the positive stories. And then, 20 years later, inshallah, that child will be a righteous adult. Or, you know, exception, once in a while, a parent may come to you and say, I did everything right and my son has gone astray. Now, now for that parent, in that situation, you bring in the story of Nuh alayhi salam. And you use that as a means of consoling their parent and letting them know that this is a test from Allah and it's not their fault. But you don't make it the foundation. You don't make it the, uh, you don't make it the norm. Right? So th this, this, is, this is what needs to change. We need to start having a positive mindset towards parenting. What I'm finding is a lot of parents... Um, you know, they, they, they hear the story of, of Nuh alayhi salam or they hear the story, the first half of the story of Yaqub alayhi salam's sons and they're like, you know, what's what's the point of trying? You know, what's the point of making all this effort? Because parenting is hard. Parenting is very, very hard. It, it's going to take 20 years of your life. Uh, it's going to use a lot of money, a lot of time. It's going to be very emotionally exhausting. Uh, you, you're going to get burnt out many times. So it's very hard. And a lot of people, they look at the story and they, and they think to themselves like, uh, what's the point? What's the point of trying uh, if they're going to end up like that? So we have to change the way we approach this topic. And I want us to approach parenting the way we approach any other topic in our life. Which is, we don't think of the exception. We don't go into a marriage thinking, I'm going to get divorced. We don't go into a business thinking, I'm going to end up bankrupt. Likewise, you don't go into parenting thinking my child is going to go astray. Rather, you go in with a positive mindset. You go in thinking that I'm going to give this my absolute best and I'm going to make dua and I'm going to put my tawakkul in Allah and inshallah if I do that, I'm going to have righteous children. And you know what? 90% of the time, that's what's going to happen. For the handful of people where that doesn't happen, then we deal with the problem. But we don't make the problem the foundation. We don't make it the norm. We don't make it a negative framework for parenting. We leave it as something that we deal with when the time is right. The reality is our history is full of lessons of, of positive parenting leading to extraordinary results. We see this with Rasulullah and the way he raised his daughters. That his daughter Fatima عنها, is from the four women who attained perfection. And that right there is, is a role model of, of righteous parenting. And then her sons, Hassan and Hussein, you know, the leaders of the youth of Jannah, May Allah be pleased with them all. We see this with Abu Bakr, Rajul Anhu, raising Aisha, Rajul Anha, to be an amazing, extraordinary scholar of Islam. Uh, Abbas, Rajul Anhu, and the way he raised Abdullah ibn Abbas, that he becomes this righteous scholar of Islam. Uh, we see this with every generation. We see this with the parents of Imam Ashafi, the parents of Imam Malik, the parents of Imam uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Uh, we see this with Omar bin Abdul Aziz, and, and the way his parents uh, you know, left him with the ulama of Medina so he can grow up to be a righteous person. We see this constant theme in our history that whenever parents put in their effort to raise their children extraordinary, those children grow into amazing people. And those children become, you know, the leaders of this ummah. And they become the ones who are able to make a change in this ummah. And I see it around me all the time. Whenever I meet a, a young man or woman who is amazing in their iman and their dedication to this deen and the work they do for this deen, 99% of the time, that amazing individual has righteous parents who raised them in a righteous way. So why can't that be our framework? Why can't that be the position from which we, we begin? That we look at all of these examples of amazing people who are the result of amazing parenting. And we say that is our framework and that is what we're aiming for and that is what we're going to do. And we put the negativity aside. We don't make that... We don't even think about it. Just like when you go into a marriage, you don't even think about divorce. 
When you go into parenting, you don't even think about my children are going to go astray. Rather, we give it our all. We give it 100%. There's dua, there's tawakkul, there's hard work, there's investing in your children, there's raising them well, there's dedicating 20 years of your life to them. There's all of this. And inshallah, inshallah, I think if we have this more positive mindset, we are going to see much, much stronger results with our parenting. So that's my thought for today. It's just a little bit that, that I've been thinking about because I'm writing a book on parenting and... Uh, I wrote the first chapter and I'm thinking to myself, this is too negative. This is not me. I don't ever, I don't ever frame anything negatively. And it was bothering me that my first chapter ended up so negative. And so I spent a, a, a while thinking about it. And these are the thoughts I came up with. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, what approach do you think works better? You know, should I keep the negative framework for the introduction to my book or should I go in this more positive direction and, and, and should this, what I mentioned now in these 15 minutes, be the introduction to my book? Let me know what you think and inshallah, maybe your thoughts would help shape my next book. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.